Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Bianca and welcome to Vintage on Tap. In this channel, I show you these behind the scene process of sewing, um, just so you guys can feel more confident in your sewing at home. Um, this video though is gonna be a little bit different. We're actually gonna be doing the 2017, 2018 New Year AMA. So what's an AMA? An AMA is ask me anything. So anything that you would have wanted to ask me in terms of uh, like my behind the scenes sewing stuff, even behind the scenes of what I show you guys, uh, stuff about myself, stuff about Jose, stuff about the cat, anything that you guys wanted to ask me, I would answer. So we got a lot of questions. Um, you know, I got questions through Instagram, through email, through uh, the form that I had on my website. So a lot of them were very different than the previous year. So let's go ahead and get started. Question number one, which I actually got three times from like different people. So I'm just gonna answer it as a whole. Uh, the basic question is how big is my fabric stash? And where do I like to buy fabric? And where do I like to buy fabric online? So I recorded a small video to play here in a second. Uh, this particular video is just gonna show you guys the size of my fabric stash, uh, which I think is gonna surprise you. So it's gonna play now. Okay guys, to answer the question of how big my fabric stash is, drum roll please, bam, there it is. That's it. <laughs> my fabric stash is actually pretty small on purpose if you can believe it. So um, I earlier this year, I went through the KonMari method in my home. If you do not know what the KonMari method is, it's basically a cleaning slash tidying slash minimalist philosophy to, um, that I'll actually be talking about in a future video um, just because I, there's some people on Instagram who were really interested to know about how I went through the process in regards to my crafting and sewing space. So anyway, um, basically I got rid of a lot of stuff so um, even this is too much. Like I'm looking at it and I would much rather pare it down at least another 50%. But I'll give you guys the fabric stash tour. Uh, first things up are my knits, which are here. Plus I have this swimsuit fabric. Now I don't normally work with knits, which is why I only have a few, uh, but I do have this guy, which I actually designed. So in my previous life, I was a textile designer, so you can see this fabric I designed for you. I show you guys this while it's out. I was originally going to make leggings with it, but I just never got around to it, but I did have it printed. Um, so anyway, so that's my knits. Um, on the woven side, I've got them here, which is what I normally sew with. Uh, a few in here I want to use up right away, probably within the next month or two. Got this one that Jose gave to me, uh, this one and this one, which I bought in New York. I've got this one I'll probably use in Valentine's Day time. And then uh, once the weather warms up, I'll probably be using this one here, this tropical one, and then this other tropical one here in the back. Now, um, I also have another one that I designed right here. This one I actually did for a bag. As you can see, my fabric designs are busy and colorful. <laughs> uh, I actually screen printed this one myself, by the way. Anyway, so I've got these guys. Anyway, um, in the back, back tour, we have our uh, recycled fur that I found at a thrift store. Please, if you are out in the market for fur, try and go for faux fur, or if you find it at a thrift store, uh, do not go out and support, you know, new fur manufacturing, it's no good. But if you find it thrown in the back in a thrift store, rescue it, appreciate the animal. <sighs> anyway, okay, um, interfacing here, remnants in the back, chiffon with this funky leg fabric, which I love. Um, and then over here, I have more like the practical fabrics, so like swimsuit lining, um, silk organza. I have some like Duchess satin for like um, for boning and things like that. And then this inner inner lining fabric for coats. And then I have my time. This is this is literally, and it, so all this is one yard plus. This here is the only bit that is anything less than one yard. I don't keep it if it's anything less than one yard, unless I like love it, which is just this. But anyway, it's Liberty, and then I'm sure you guys recognize this tulip fabric. But as I said, uh, that's the stash. It's small. I prefer to keep it that way. 
want to make it smaller but we'll see what happens I don't buy fabric unless I'm gonna use it because um, otherwise I end up with this and I'm just like Ugh. Um, oh and this uh, one of the big reasons my sash is also small is because my storage space is this tiny so gotta make it work <laughs> As you guys saw in the video, my fabric stash is tiny. Um, as I said, I've reduced my fabric stash quite a lot when I married my entire house. Uh, I'll be doing another video, as I said in the little clip, uh, regarding specifically conmaring your, uh, your crafting area and your sewing space. It's not for everyone. It is a pretty radical cleaning, cleaning methodology, but um, I'll be doing a video about that later. Um, to answer the question specifically about uh, where I buy my fabric uh, locally and where I buy it online, uh, here in San Francisco I go to Bright Text Fabrics, I go to Fabric Outlets, and I go to Discount Fabrics, which is um, all here in San Francisco itself. Uh, very rarely will I go to Joann's in terms of buying fabric. I like walk down the aisles. If there's something that really catches me, I'll pick it out, but generally most of the stuff there is not for me. Um, but online, I will buy just from three places. I, I like I keep it simple. Like most of these places carry exactly what I want all the time, so it's not really a big deal for me. Uh, first one, Bright Tech Fabrics. So their online selection is sometimes a little bit different than their store. So luckily, I'm I'm cool enough with the people there, and I'm, they're close enough with uh, close enough in the city that I'll like you know, put in my order online and then like email them. It's like, hey, I can pick it up. You don't have to mail it and it's on my way to, from work and stuff. Uh, so Right Text Fabrics. Second one is Mood Fabrics. Um, they have actually been super chill. Um, when I did my uh, original bomber jacket, I had bought fabric in store, um, but they overcharged me for the yardage that they cut. So I, you know, I actually had posted about it, I think on, Twitter and like they got back to me and sent me more fabric via their online stores. Super chill, really good customer service. And then the last one is fabric.com. Um, their selection is pretty big, so it's very easy to get lost, especially since their navigation system is not that great. But if there's something specific you're looking for, they usually have it. So um, those are my three places that I always use. All right. Next question. Charisma via Instagram asked me, why are you so beautiful? Sunscreen. <laughs> sunscreen, 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 good rest, water. I very rarely drink soda, but I do drink quite a lot of rum because of the tiki drinks I like to drink, but lots of water, sunscreen, lots of rest. All right, next up. What's the best way to style your hair to wear those fabulous vintage hats without getting hat hair. Basically, how do you wear hats? And this question came from Megan on Instagram. Um, what I would recommend with hats is, I mean, it really depends on the type of hat. Um, what I would do first is put the hat on how you want and then decide from there how you're gonna curl your hair around it. Just because, yeah, every hat is so different. Um, maybe also start like a general Pinterest board where you see the hat style that you have, like the different hats that you might own and how people have styled around those hats. Um, also, I re highly recommend using a pomade just to make sure that like everything underneath doesn't like, like get super staticky to the inside of the hat. Um, just a little bit of pomade to keep everything down and uh, hairspray. Hairspray, pomade, and curling based off of the shape of the hat. So, you know, like for example, if you would put the hat on this way, um, then you can kind of see, okay, well, this part of my head, hair is gonna stick out in this part of the hair, so I'm just gonna curl around that. So, I recommend that way. All right, so next question uh, via Instagram was, where's, um, wait, further discussions about fabrics, um, buying fabrics online. Their specific uh, concern was uh, buying it out in, when you live out like really far from any fabric store. They're saying they're two hours away from, uh, from Joann's. So um, in regards to the initial question, if you live really that far out, Please, 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 if you haven't already, please watch the Fabric Swatch book. Um, 
video that I made about starting a, a swatch book. That way, you know, if you live really far out and you need stuff shipped to you, you are at least have a selection at home that you can look at what those fabrics are going to be before you order them online. All right, cool. So this question came via email from Marie. Um, so how do you select your big projects? There are many, there are so many patterns out there which are vintage inspired. So how do you decide the one? So I tend to sew per occasion, not necessarily per the pattern exactly. So for example, if I have a party coming up, my thought is what would I like to wear to that party? Or, oh, I'm going to Miami. Like I just came back from Miami from vacation. And it's like, well, what would I like to wear on Miami on the beach when, I, when I'm out there? So I, I choose more based on the event and how I would like to look and feel in that event. Um, but no, I agree. There are so many patterns as well that are like, they're, they're very multi-purpose and they, they can go anywhere. So when it comes to like more toned down casual patterns like that, um, I think what I focus more on is the technique that I want to learn in making it. So whether it's that it's a specific zipper insertion or it's a specific like button placement or whatever, I'll pick patterns based off of that as well. So it's not always necessarily, oh, this is the new season, you know, butter pattern and oh, this is a new season Colette. Um, it really just depends on what I'm, I intend to use it for just because I don't like to buy fabric unnecessarily. I don't like to just, I, I don't like to sew without a specific reason or specific purpose. Like I want to be able to see that end case. All right, next question. Christine from Denmark. What is your favorite sewing pattern currently and what pattern do you wish, you most wish existed? Good questions. <laughs> um, so uh, what is my favorite sewing pattern currently? To be honest, um, right now, I'm kind of really liking the penny dress, which I already made. <laughs> uh, it's kind of crazy to think like something that I've already made is still like stuck in my mind like that. But I liked it because it, it fits very well. It's super versatile. Like I've been able to wear it out on vacation. I've been able to wear it to work uh, and then just like a regular Saturday. And for me, you know, you have to imagine like I'm making stuff for occasions, like I said. So to find one like that, I think is very good. Like depending on the fabric that it's made in, I can use it for other things. Um, I also really like um, the B6453, which I'm wearing right now. Right now I'm wearing the black version um, or like the, the the pencil skirt version, um, but I do like the, the one with a dirndl, dirndl skirt. <laughs> um, I do like that one quite a lot and I've made three so far. So I'd probably be making some more this year. Um, and what is the pattern that you wish most existed? Um, to be honest, I don't have one that I'm like, oh my God, I want that. But I do remember when I was a teenager and I was really into like Gothic Lolita fashion, I always wished that there were patterns for those dresses more readily available. Now that I'm older and I've sewn so much more, I can see that it's, it's, it's easier to like Franken pattern something together to make it work. Um, but at least when I was like really young, there were dresses that I would fall in love with and I, I, I could never find a design for them. But um, I think, um, I think it's, uh, I think it's simplicity that's releasing more of that style dress. And so when I see those like cosplay slash Gothic Lolita dresses out there now, I'm like, oh man, if that was out when I was like 16, I would have been so happy. <laughs> um, all right. So Nadine from Switzerland asks, um, so she has just re re rediscovered sewing and she's uh, discovered the videos. Uh, what she's always wondered is how do you, I keep my mojo up, my, my sewing mojo up? And this is specifically, um, you know, when sewing can become a chore, when it, it moves from hobby to chore, how do you keep yourself motivated? How do you keep like the sewing mojo going away? And especially when there's pressure to make videos and garments for everyone. Um, this one is actually very near and dear to me just because, you know, I was talking to the people who, who follow me on Patreon and I, I, I sent out a blog and it was basically like, I have not made a personal sewing project in over a year. And that makes it very difficult to stay 
motivated <laughs> and it's just because the channel and the videos that I make for the channel take so long um, you have to imagine that the average person who sews day to day are able to like crank out three projects to my one just because of how much longer it takes to make you know to make the video to set up the lights to set up the camera all that sort of stuff the editing the photos out in the street or whatever um, what keeps me motivated so I'm not looking at it in terms of sewing in terms of the specific piece but I'm talking about the concept of it what keeps me motivated is nobody else will own or have exactly what I'm making and that is a huge driver for me I don't like looking basic. I don't like looking like the girl down the street, you know, like I want to look like me. I want to look how I set out to look when I picked out the fabric from the bolt in the fabric store. So, you know, in terms of staying motivated and not, and not putting it in, in a chore category and, and, and that sort of thing, I think finding an exciting reason to wear what you've made at the end of it. Right, and so it's very easy if you're making like a t-shirt, it's like, oh, how am I gonna get excited about this when I'm just gonna wear it to work or whatever. You know, every once in a while, throw something in, you know, like Salt Bay with the salt, bam. Throw a little something in there that makes that particular garment like elevated, you know? So it's like, okay, well, I'll sew three t-shirts, but then at the end of that, I'm gonna make myself a dress that I can wear out for dinner on a date or whatever. You know, find these little things in there that you can make it a little bit more exciting, that you're excited to jump to it. All right, so next question. Uh, this question is from Meg from Ireland. She says, uh, can you explain why someone would need to do a sway back adjustment and how can you tell if you should? All right, so sway back adjustments is basically your back to your booty, that distance is shorter in the front than it is in the back in some capacity for whatever reason. Um, so whether that is, you know, you have a bigger, uh, a fuller bust or your booty sticking out a little bit more or whatever, there's a bunch of different reasons as to why that might happen. Um, the way that you can usually tell is um, if you were to like tie a ribbon around your waist or where your natural waist is falling, you'll be able to put on a muslin and if you have the line drawn onto your the waist on the muslin, you'll see how it wavers and differs from the natural waist that is like tied in that ribbon. Um, in my case, I'm usually about half an inch off, so my the, the muslin will be like half an inch longer on my back than it is from the ribbon. And so from there is how I kind of determine. Um, what also usually happens is that you'll have this weird pulling at the not not pulling but like pooling of fabric at your lower back um, and that will happen in both skirts and tops slash dresses so just take a look at it in the back and trying to try to hold the muslin on your body like put it on in a way that it's it's going to sit like how it's supposed to sit and then from there you'll start to see like the center back is like drooping lower than the than the rest of your garment and it's like okay well that means there's too much space in the center back line and I need to like cut that distance out. Cool. Next question uh, from Shannon here in the States. Uh, can you do a quick tutorial uh, for an FBA on Butterick 5987 and on Butterick 6094? Uh, she's wanted to make the patterns for a while. So with those specifically, um, the first one, 5897, I. I have not yet made a like one-sided dress yet um, just because on my shape I feel like it'd be a little bit weird um, there are a couple out there that I'm curious about if I ever do them I'll make sure to like email you back <laughs> so you know to look out for that email as for the second one as uh, 6094 which was a patterns by Gertie dress um, that one specifically I know it's a little bit tricky just because the back is open but what I would recommend is just uh, when you're doing the muslin put in a zipper up the back and then treat it as a regular bodice because I think the back being open like that kind of throws people off um, but see if there's like a center back line that you can pin closed in the back just so you can it fits like a regular muslin and then you can go from there just because that opening can kind of throw things off unnecessarily down the road especially when you're like doing like pattern manipulation all right so next question 
uh, from the United States. Do you have any tips for preventing mistakes? That seems to be my challenge lately and it's made me avoid the machine, which makes me so sad. Um, tips for preventing mistakes. Take breaks. So I, what I like to do is at least every couple hours get up, get a glass of water, maybe, you know, go downstairs and get yourself, you know, something to eat. Make sure you're not hungry. That's a big one. So breaks, not being hungry. Um, because that'll start to mess with you. I tend to eat every four hours or so, <laughs> or like, you know, getting a snack or whatever. Um, highly recommend doing that. Water, and when you need to stop, stop. Do not push yourself to the point to where you're not, um, you're like, oh, I can just finish this. I can do this buttonhole real fast. I can do it. It's like, no. The moment that you're like, okay, I'm kind of, I need to, I need to stop for now. Just take, just stop that point. Because that, for me, at least for me, that's when the most mistakes happen. When I'm like, oh, I could just do a little more. I can do a little more. No, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Stop while you're ahead. Because if you push yourself, then that's when that buttonhole is going to turn out like garbage. So save yourself the hurt, the heartache, the pain. And, you know, if you need to stop, so I wouldn't, pro I probably wouldn't push it past like five to six hours um, continuous, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously take breaks in the middle of it. But like if you've been sewing for six hours on that day, you, you need to give yourself a sizable break in order to be able to come back with it to fresh eyes, you know, because that's when that's when you'll like sew armholes closed by accident or you'll you'll sew the arm to like the skirt without noticing. And yeah. <laughs> It's it's more of a pain in the neck to have to like seam rip it or like seam rip it all apart or um, yeah and then you accidentally cut into the it's just like just don't do it <laughs> all right let's see here so Lorraine from Israel asks when choosing fabric do you choose the style or material first and do you have a large stash uh, so for this one here I choose the style first. So again, I choose on occasion. So if whatever event it is, oh, I'm gonna go to that concert and I wanna look cute, I'm gonna pick whatever dress first and then I'll go out hunting for the fabric. Uh, just because for me, at least my process in terms of starting a pattern or starting a, a garment is I usually, uh, I grab the pattern, I will do all my research on the pattern just so I can get every piece of information that's in the internet about that pattern to make my decisions easier and faster when I'm at the fabric store. Um, let's see here. Oh, and then as for the stash, I've already shown the stash. Um, cool, so Candy from, uh, from Japan. I'm saying Japan, you live in Japan, girl. All right, <laughs> what is your guilty pleasure TV show or movie? If you were forbidden from wearing uh, pre-1980s fashion ever again on pain of death, what would your wardrobe look like? And what retro style habit do you wish had continued today? All right, so let's unpack it. Guilty Pleasure TV show is, I'd probably have to say Always Sunny. Uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, just because I think the humor is so obnoxious and that's what I love about it. Um, I could say things like Keeping Up with the Kardashians, but I don't have cable. So whenever I watch it, like if I, if somebody's like playing it or whatever, I'll stop and like look, but I don't, I don't generally watch it regularly. So Always Sunny would be the next one. Um, if you were forbidden from wearing pre-19 dating fashion, so that would be, um, if I was wearing something past 80s, I would probably go, oh gosh, it's a good question. Um, I'd probably go like goth, probably goth. Though I think goth started before the 80s, I think. What, right Jose? Yeah, it got started before. I don't know, I was gonna say punk first, but I'm like, oh, that's 70s. So no, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably go goth. Um, let's see here, what retro lifestyle habit do you wish had continued today? Uh, people dressing up to travel. I actually really love that. This is pre having to take your shoes off to get on the airplane. I wish that we could wear little heels and like, you know, dress up, have the gloves, have the hat, like be ready to jump on that plane and look fabulous when you get there. At this point, I get on the plane in yoga pants and a hoodie because the airplane is always cold. I make sure that I have shoes that I can slip on and off till I can get through TSA. And generally I look like a schlub when I'm traveling, but I mean, it's easier, I guess, to sit there for five hours on a plane in yoga pants. <laughs> All right, um, let's see here. 
So Fiona from Scotland asks, I was wondering if you can recommend a comprehensive book for fitting. Also, would you like to turn sewing into your full-time career? And if so, how do you plan to do it? So that actually goes hand in hand with uh, one of the final questions, one of the last few questions that we got, uh, which was, I would recommend Fit For Real People, um, which I have referenced before in this channel. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It is, I basically use it as a sewing encyclopedia. If there's anything that I'm like, uh, I don't know, let's look it up. And there's always something there. Um, the only problem that I have with that book is that the information is not outdated. It's just organized very weird. So they will have um, like real life examples scattered throughout the book, which is great, but then they'll give directions for specific footing adjustments in those real people example, but it's not in like the main meat of the book. So there'll be information scattered in, you know, in this person's info and this person's info, and it's not like gelled together. So then I have to read fitting tips for somebody who has a completely different body shape just because they're talking about a specific adjustment that it's not in the meat of the book. So I, there's a lot of flipping back and forth between that and they have not updated the book in a really long time, at least the version that I, I bought on Amazon this past year or a couple years ago or whatever it was. Um, like it still has examples from the 90s, which was like 30 years ago now. So they, they could that book could stand to have a nice refresh. Um, as for the second question, would you like to turn sewing into your full-time career? And if so, how do you plan to do it? I, I would love to turn sewing into my full-time career. Um, not necessarily the sewing part of it because I feel like, you know, my, my role is better as like a sewing coach. Sorry for the noise, guys. <laughs> um, so, I think my role is m better suited at encouraging other people to sew, kind of guiding them through the process, demystifying it. You know, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm much more qualified to do that, to be, um, to, to, to speak with you and to speak with all the other viewers who are interested in it and like get them pumped about sewing rather than actually doing the sewing work. Because I do that, I mean, even though this past year I haven't sewn too much for myself. Um, I, I sew because I love to sew and I wish others can be inspired to sew as much as I love to sew. So that I think I can do better doing that. Um, as for how I'm gonna make it happen, to be continued. <laughs> All right, so uh, Michelle asks, and she's from the States. So she asked how I'd gotten through Fit For Real People, which I got, uh, I got into. Uh, will we be seeing more fitting videos in 2018? So, yes you will. I'll actually be um, doing a little bit more deep dive into the fitting videos I'm gonna be doing into 2018 later. Um, so I will say they will stick around, so be excited and pumped for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a brand new year, so. Um, I'm kind of excited to try some different projects. Um, cool, and she has some additional questions, but we're gonna have a special guest here momentarily. Um, last question, general question, is from Grace from the States. What is a sewing machine I've seen in using on some of your videos? So I actually did a full video about that, it was with my refurbishing my sewing machine video, which is a brother, 651, which I haven't used for a minute. I'm actually like resting my elbow on it right now. Um, the only re I get so many questions about this. The only reason I have not used it lately is because I have to rearrange my entire living room in order to be able to pull it out and like open it up. Um, I have a one bedroom apartment in San Francisco, which is tiny. Uh, so yeah, that's the only reason we haven't used it. Anyway, we're bringing on our guest onto the channel which is Jose, which you guys have seen before in the 2016 AMA and he is going to appear now <laughs> the man behind the camera there's actually literally nobody behind the camera right now so we're just hoping this turns out okay anyway it will, <laughs> it will. It will. <laughs> all right so okay. so uh we're gonna answer uh two questions or a, a, a couple questions that will involve answers from jose so we're gonna go back to michelle's uh so she wanted to know how we met and what is the one thing you like about each other and what is your perfect date uh, okay, so how we met? We met at a bar. We met at a bar and it was very lame. But not at a bar. We weren't there to like hang out at the bar. It was... It was a, a mutual friend invited people over, I guess. Yeah. 
right? And then when I got there, she was already there, but I was working at the time. Yeah, you were on your lunch break. So I was on my lunch break, and I caught up with them at the bar, and I didn't have too much time, so I had a beer. We literally, we, we like said, oh, hey, nice to meet you, you know? And I was sitting across from the bar, texting some other dude. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so we're like, oh, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Okay, cool. Bye. <laughs> you, been, you were there it, it, just long enough. Yeah, to she doesn't right. remember. We actually had a conversation. Oh, we, yeah. we did, we oh, did. Yeah. You don't remember, but we did have a conversation. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have not known that you liked me. <laughs> no, no, we didn't know, no. No. I I was like, huh, hmm, I'm pretty sure she likes me. Whatever. Either way, he leaves the bar. I turn to look at my friend. I'm like, our friend who, by the way, is the video editor for the channel. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so I turn to look at him. I'm like, your friend's cute. And then he shows me a text. That I just texted the same friend that telling her that she was hot. <laughs> And so at that point, he shows and turns me the text and says, oh, she's hot. T, 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 T. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Cool. So we started dating. I think that was like on a Monday or Tuesday. That was on a Tuesday. Tuesday. No. Yeah. No, 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 no. It was early in the week. It was it was middle of the week, I think. I played it cool. I didn't I didn't. Text no, no, no. It for but that's not say like that was like a Monday or Tuesday, and then we started dating on the Friday. No, we did not. Yes, we did. We. <laughs> she, she never remembers. We went out on a Tuesday. That was our first date. After the meet up at the bar, it was we went out on a Tuesday. Then Wednesday, uh, we went out for. Uh, we went out with Michael again and his then girlfriend. <laughs> and then Thursday, I saw you for a second at the train station. Uh, Friday, you went out with your friends because you don't want to hang out with me. <laughs> Saturday, we went to the opera. Yeah, he took me to the opera. But yeah, so then, that yeah. Whole week, it was like a whole like meeting each other week. <laughs> it was good. It was fun. It was fun. All right, so wait, 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 wait. And what's okay. the perfect date? The perfect date and what do we like most about each other? I, well, I think the perfect date now involves tiki drinks. Tiki drinks, yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it involves a uh, Peruvian pollo la brasa <laughs> <laughs> and tiki drinks. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I'm vegetarian now, so. <laughs> I, I, you, he just decided. He just recently decided, and I'm just like, because I get it. I get the vegetarian thing, but it just, in a household where I'm not a vegetarian, it breaks my heart. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be all right. But yes, I don't know exactly what we would do in a perfect date, but it will definitely involve tiki. If we can find a tiki bar in Paris, I think that would be more like a, our if perfect you, if date. You, if you live in Paris, if you live in let pa- us know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, okay, let's see here. Um, last question, last question. Let me, let me scroll through, because we took a, okay. <clears throat> This question, and this one's more for you. I think you can answer it better than I could. This question's from Dan here in the States. He says, what can be done to promote sewing, particularly vintage, Mm. among men? Uh, That's very hard because I don't sew, so it's very hard for me But you've been on this journey with me for a year and a half. So I think there is a gap between what a man with no experience can do versus what that same man would want. Mm. That there's a huge gap. So if I look at one of the patterns and it has like a cool motor leather jacket, I'll be like, yes, I want that. <laughs> and if I can sew that, that'd be great. But I can't. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like, okay, the simpler stuff for men shouldn't be pajama pants. No man wants to sew his own pajama pants. That sucks. <laughs> so if you start me with something that is cooler, that I'll be like, oh yeah, I can totally rock that. <laughs> but simple, yeah, I, I, I'd say, uh, I, I think that's where companies are lagging. I like actual practical men's clothing. Right, practical and cool. Like something like, mm. you know, like a shirt like this, it's cool, you know? But all I see is like pajama pants for yeah, men. That's true. And yeah, I'm not excited about that. What about vintage sewing for men? I am the wrong person to ask because I do not 
Uh, I did not you? wear anything vintage. <laughs> and you, you, I mean, you don't technically like vintage men's clothing either. No, I'm not. No. I like, I'm always showing him, like, what about this? What about this? And yeah. he's just like. It's not me. No. Um, I like vintage guitars, but not vintage clothing for men. I think she looks beautiful, but not, not for me. Especially the hats, the, the weird hats, like, how do you call the fedoras, I think? Is that, no. That's There's so many different hats. Oh, uh, okay. One of those hats, I always think people look ridiculous in those. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you do this to me? <laughs> you know this is recording, right? <laughs> I know. I know. Either way, um, in terms of getting more men to sew, my answer would be, um, I think it, I think there's something to be said for making garments that people actually want to make. Because, um, mm -hmm. yeah, pajama yeah. pants, it, it sucks because they say unisex. And not that there's anything wrong with unisex, but it's just like, if you're trying to get a dude to sew, um, say, marking it as, your girlfriend can wear these too, it's probably not the best way to go. Um, I think I think more modern cuts in terms of the, the average dude, getting the average dude to sew. Uh, when it comes to vintage sewing for men though, um, there's no vintage reproduction patterns that are being made for men. So like those old like 70s, like, Western shirts are not being reproduced for a mass audience and there, there are a few uh, menswear designers out there and like uh, like so manly like if you're not on that Facebook group definitely check it out there's a bunch of dudes who go in there and they post their sewing projects um, I'm part of the group just because I like to see it like it makes me feel good to see dudes sewing um, but uh, that community is still really small it's still really, there's not that many resources for them. Like I can make full bust adjustment videos until the cows come home, but he's not gonna see a video about how to get the top stitching right on his shirt. So I think- um, Especially because I have big shoulders. Yeah, like specific- like, What do I do about spinning that? issues. Like I, even for me, I don't, I, I, I know how to do it on a woman's blouse, but I've never tried it for a dude. So if there are men out there who are going to start a YouTube channel to do what I do, but for men, I am, I'm there. Like, let's collab. Um, we know the one guy from Amsterdam. Yes, oh my gosh. Uh, his name, jo jo Jost. 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 Jost, yeah. That guy is so freaking badass. I'll link his info down below. If you're not following him, you need to. He's, he's awesome. Awesome. He's amazing, and I love what he's doing with men sewing. Uh, actually, actually, now that I think about it, um, he did send me his website a while ago. Um, and we communicated back and forth a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm gonna start sewing, it's gonna be from one of his patterns from his website. It's not gonna be from battery or. Butterick, yeah. Butterick or, I don't know, the bigger companies, like, there's nothing that they offer for me, but I think this guy had some really cool stuff that I, I, it, I think it's more like my age. Yes, yeah, age, so yeah. age, age appropriate and style, I think, yeah. Nice. All right, guys, we have come to the end of the video. Woo, it's been a long one. I know, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> we'll see how many of you guys stuck through to the end. Maybe we should ask a question. Oh, Maybe we should ask a question. <laughs> what color is the cat? <laughs> the cat's not even here. I don't know where she went. <laughs> she was right, here. Regardless, I guess the question is, if you watch to the end of the video, how did Jose and I meet? Did we, <laughs> did we, did we meet on a, no, 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 on a Monday or Tuesday? Or did we meet on a Wednesday like he says? <laughs> I didn't say Wednesday, it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Either way, I hope you guys enjoy this video, getting a little behind-the-scenes peek at our lives, at our, at our, the questions that people ask us, at our advice, and all that stuff. Um, we have so many videos planned for you for 2018, so please keep an eye out for those. Um, if you like the video, like, you gotta do the thing, like, like, share, subscribe, all the places, all the stuff. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs>